Hi everybody, Andrew Smith here from We Speak Business and welcome to this video slash lesson on designing the perfect study routine. So this has been a highly requested topic for a long time and I thought it would be a really great idea to share with you how I would set up a perfect study routine. And most if not all of the tips that I'm going to share with you today have also been implemented by myself when I've learned languages in the past and I found them to be very effective and useful. So I would like to just share them with you because I know a lot of you would like to learn a language or spend more time on improving your business English skills. But unfortunately, most of you just don't have the time. And that's really the biggest issue here. So by designing a really great study routine, we're not only giving our studying more organization and structure, but we're also freeing up a lot of time in the process, time that you can spend doing the things that you love. So my first tip for you today is to focus on daily consistent practice rather than cramming. So people generally fail at learning a language or any skill because they often try to do too much at once. For example, let's say you've decided that you're going to study for six hours in one week, but you decide that you're going to study for six hours on Monday, and you decide you're going to sit down on Monday and you're just going to study English or whatever language you're learning for six hours. And by the end of those six hours, you feel very accomplished and very productive, but you dread the thought of having to do the same thing again on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and for the rest of the week. So what we want to do is we want to focus on daily consistent practice, not cramming. So if you have six hours to study for the whole week, break those six hours up into smaller, more manageable chunks of time. And what this will do is it will make exposure to English a daily habit that you carry out religiously. We want to, we want to use English the same way that we kind of wash our face or brush our teeth. It's this habit that we just do every single day without thinking. Now, our second tip and this is really all about something we call the spacing effect. And you can see here, scrap all that. Now, a really interesting concept is something that we call the spacing effect. So on the screen here, you can see we have two graphs and the one at the top in red or pinkish color, it says 10 exposures in a row. So we can use language here and let's say that on Monday when we sat down to do our studying we learned 10 phrasal verbs and you will see on the graph that the longer time goes on for the less able we are to recall those phrasal verbs we've learned. Whereas below in the green graph we have 10 exposures over 10 days. So rather than learning 10 phrasal verbs in one day, we would learn just one phrasal verb every single day or for 10 days in a row. And you can see here that the recall percentage is more steady and it's a lot higher than if we have just 10 exposures in a row. So this is a really great example as to why we should space out our study sessions rather than cramming. Now, our second tip after we have focused on daily consistent practice is to decide which areas you want to focus on and also how much time you will dedicate to each area. So to set up a good study plan, you need to write down which areas of the language you want to practice. And below here in the bullet points, we have some examples. So for example, I might say, in one week, I want to do a little bit of vocabulary work and I want to learn signposting language for presentations. I also want to look at continuous verb tenses for grammar because this is something I find difficult. For pronunciation, I want to focus a little bit on word stress because my teacher told me in my previous lesson that I needed to improve on this area. 
I'm then going to practice reading and I'm going to read a business article about technology, let's say because I work in the technology field and it would be interesting and useful for me to learn more technology related vocabulary. Then I'm going to practice writing a little bit and I'm going to focus a little bit on formal emails because let's say you have to send formal emails on a daily basis. And I'm going to try to get speaking practice every single day if possible. Now I'm not saying that you have to choose six points but you should figure out which areas of English or business English that you want to practice and try to be very specific about what you want to do or work on. And once you've written your list, you will then want to score yourself on a scale of one to 10 on how confident you are in each of those areas right now. And make sure that you are honest with yourself. I personally would check with a teacher. So if you have a teacher, or if you know someone who is a business English coach or teacher, I would check with them to make sure that you are heading in the right direction. So that's tip number two, decide which areas you want to focus on and how much time you'll dedicate to each area. And tip number three is using Google Calendar. Now I plan more or less my entire life on Google Calendar and you know not everybody is that kind of regimentated but Google Calendar or using any calendar is such uh, an amazing hack because it will just make your life so much more organized, more structured, and it will make you less stressed. So what I would do is I would use Google Calendar and every Sunday I would block out all of the fixed appointments or events that I know I have coming up in the following week. So for example, if I know that I am in the office between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday to Friday, I would just simply make a you know block like this and I would drag it down from eight all the way to six and I would just title it as work. And I would also do this with any other social events or family events or maybe I need to go to my son's graduation ceremony. And I would block out all of those fixed or set appointments and events that I know I have coming up in the week. And after you've done this, you will be able to see how many hours you have left available um, in the entire week. So using Google Calendar is a really, really great tool to use. You can use Apple Calendar or you can just use a physical calendar if that's what you prefer. But I like Google Calendar because it's really convenient and it integrates well with other Google products. Now our fourth tip is to be realistic about your goals and intentions. And this is a very, very important tip. Because when you first set a goal, what a lot of people tend to do is they tend to shoot very, very high. And they tend to be very ambitious, which is great, but more often than not, they are overly ambitious. And that's not really what we want to try and do. What we want to do when we first set a goal is we want to shoot really, really low, just at the very beginning. And you want to aim for a goal that you know you will definitely hit, but it is still an improvement on your abilities right now. So it doesn't matter if it's even just a 1% improvement. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how low the number is, but you want to make sure it's a number that you know you will more or less definitely hit. So as an example, let's say you've blocked off all of your fixed appointments and events for the week, and you have 10 hours remaining for the week. So how many hours do you think you would dedicate to perfecting your communication skills? Now, some people will say, well, if I have 10 hours, that means I'm going to study for 10 hours. And that's completely wrong. That's the worst thing you can do. Because you know, and I know, there is no way you are going to do those 10 hours on your first study session week. What I would do instead is I would shoot for five hours. What this does is it allows us a buffer 
So when those important things come up, we can take care of them. Uh, if we wanted to spend a little bit of time with our children, we can do that. And I know in myself that I could definitely study for just five hours in one week. That's one hour a day, Monday to Friday. I can take the weekend off and, you know, one hour out of your day is really nothing. So remember, when you are choosing or when you're deciding this, be frugal with your time and goals at the beginning. Our main aim is to grow your motivation before you start giving yourself a real challenge. Because what will happen is when we do those five hours at the end of the week, we will have accomplished something and we will have succeeded at something. And that's going to boost our morale. It's going to make us more determined and motivated for the following week. But at the very beginning, we want to choose a very low number, something that we know we will hit. Do not be too ambitious. And I would really recommend if you have, you know, however many hours you have at the end of the week, I would say dedicate 50%, so half of that, to studying. Now our fifth tip is to find effective and suitable study material. And before I go about finding good material, I would first of all take a level test. And you can do a business English level test online, or you can book one with a teacher. And then after I've got my level, I would then invest in some good materials and tools. Now, me personally, I would highly recommend a good textbook. And in the blog that I've written this week about designing the perfect study material, I actually give three really good recommendations on textbooks you can use for business English. You could also make a list of podcasts. And I would try searching online and designing and downloading some useful tools to help you plan and organize your language learning. Now, self-study is, you know, it's fine and it's good when we have no money and we just need to improve our communication and language. But at some point, you're going to need to actually join a program or a course. And this is really the best option because you will have the guidance of a professional native speaking teacher. And you will also have the guidance of an expert, someone that can correct you and tell you what you're doing wrong and show you how to actually improve. And if you're interested in joining a business English program, we actually have a speaking program called We Speak Business Unlimited which gives you unlimited speaking practice every single day. And I'm going to leave a link in the description box if you would like to get more information about our program. So tip number five is to find effective and suitable study material. Now, after you've done that, you'll want to then block out time for studying. So what you would do is you would go to your Google Calendar or whatever calendar you're using and you should know how much time you're going to spend each day because you should have divided the total amount of time you have left by five or seven. And then I would start actually writing in what you're going to study on what day and at what time. So for example, our students at We Speak Business Unlimited, it will automatically appear in their Google Calendar when they have a lesson coming up. So they don't actually need to do anything. And that's really a good suggestion or recommendation um, because you know it sometimes takes a lot of time to write down what we're going to be doing. Now, after you have blocked off the time for studying, you will need to set reminders for each event. And this is why Google Calendar is so great because you can set reminders for each event that you have and try to leave a slight buffer in between events. So, you know, make sure that there is at least a 10 minute buffer in between appointments. So if you decide that you're going to study for one hour a day, uh, five days a week, I would try studying for 50 minutes and giving yourself a 10 minute break before the next appointment or event. And it's very important to remember that you should reward yourself after you complete each study session. And I would recommend a healthy reward like 
taking a walk or listening to your favorite song or making a cup of tea or making a cup of coffee or you know even watching a video or an episode of your favorite TV show something that you can do to relax yourself and give yourself a big pat on the back so tip number six is to block out your time for studying so by now you should know how many hours you're going to dedicate per week to learning business English you should have all of your fixed appointments and events blocked off on Google Calendar uh, you should have your study materials or you should have enrolled in a speaking program and you should have blocked out time uh, for the whole week where you will sit down and learn. Now, tip number seven is to have a backup plan because there will be times inevitably where you will have to divert away from your schedule and sometimes this is in our control, sometimes it's out of our control, but this is just a part of life and we have to accept that there will be times where we can't commit. So when you can't sit down and study for your full session, you can replace it with a short five minute emergency study session. And an emergency study session is basically just a five minute increment where you will expose yourself to the English language. And a really great way to do this is to use dead time. And dead time are those periods of time where, you know, there are things that we have to do, but we're not really doing anything during those times. For example, commuting, um, you know, cooking dinner, uh, taking a shower or just sitting on the toilet, whatever it is. This is what we call dead time. Use that dead time, utilize it and get five minutes of practice in. And what I would really recommend is reviewing previous material to solidify what you've already learned. So let's say the day is Wednesday and you studied on Tuesday and Monday but your boss calls you in and you need to uh, divert from your schedule and you need to do a little bit of overtime. So you can't do your study session when you get home. So instead just say, okay, well on the commute, on the way home, I'm just going to review everything I've learned yesterday and Monday. Or when I get home and while I'm eating dinner, I'm just going to review those two phrasal verbs that I practiced yesterday. You know, be creative, but I would say it's a really good idea to use that dead time to review previous material. And it doesn't matter that you're not getting the full 60 minutes in because you're still getting that exposure on a daily basis. And if you are a We Speak Business Unlimited member, then a really good option for you if you can't make it to a live lesson is to watch recordings of previous lessons and use that as your emergency study session. So for those of you who aren't familiar, our We Speak Business Unlimited program, we actually have a separate product inside the product called the Recorded Lesson Vault. And every single one of our live lessons is recorded and then stored in this vault for students to watch whenever they want. And when you can't make it to a live lesson, I would highly recommend watching a recording of a previous lesson. So tip number seven is to have a backup plan and everyone should always have a backup plan just to ensure we're getting that daily practice and that consistency. Now tip number eight is to track and monitor your progress each week and I would typically do this on the weekend so either Saturday or Sunday but what you'll want to do is at the end of each week, write a list of each thing you studied and write an honest review on how you think you did. And then again, score yourself out of 10. And remember, you should be honest. And then after you've scored yourself, you will then set yourself a target of improving for the following week, even if it's only by a fraction of what you did the day before. And a really great example of this is a man called Rowdy Gaines. He was a US uh, Olympic swimmer 
And Rowdy Gaines had this system. So when he went to training, his coach would ask him, for example, to hold his breath for uh, 45 seconds. And he would hold his breath for 45 seconds. And then the next day, he would try to hold his breath for 46 seconds. And then he would do that. And then the following day, he would try for 47 seconds, and so on. But notice how Rowdy Gaines didn't say, okay, on Monday, I held my breath for 45 seconds, and today, I'm going to hold it for 60 seconds, right? He was smarter than that, because he knew that it was more effective to improve just by a tiny bit, but improve each and every single day. And you want to try and mirror that with your business English language learning. So always make sure to review your progress at the end of each week, score yourself, and then set yourself a target of improving for the following week. Now, tip number nine is related to tip number eight, but plan your week ahead on Sundays. Remember to take breaks, give yourself a day or two off from the books, and use that time to plan your week ahead. So on Sunday, in the afternoon or evening, what I would do is I would complete this whole process again by first identifying which areas you want to work on. Then I would block out my set appointments and events in my Google Calendar. Then I would figure out how many hours I could commit to my language learning for that week. And then I would block off my study times. And finally, remember, if one week doesn't go quite to plan, it's absolutely fine. We're humans, we make mistakes, we don't always get it right. So if one week it goes really badly, don't beat yourself up about it. What you should do is when you fall off the horse, get straight back on. So say to yourself, okay, this week wasn't really great, it didn't go quite as planned, what happened, what caused me to miss my study sessions, or what caused me not to study at all, and how can I make sure that that same thing doesn't happen again next week? So keeping a good track record of your performance is really vital. And tip number 10 isn't really a tip, but it's just something that I really want you to think about. It takes 28 days to form a new habit give or take. So if you can stick to your schedule for just 28 days, the chance of it becoming a lifetime habit increases significantly. You know, they say even to smokers, if you can quit smoking for one month, then you're a lot more likely to not want to smoke on the second month and the third month and so on. You're more likely to quit completely. And the second point here is really important because forming life-changing habits requires discipline, not motivation. A common myth or misconception is we often can't do things because we don't have motivation, right? I felt this before. I can't work today because I'm not motivated. Or like, I just wish I had more motivation. But people don't understand that, you know, Every person in the world is not always 100% motivated. Even freak geniuses like Elon Musk and, you know, Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos, these guys aren't 100% motivated all the time. But what these people are is disciplined. And that is the, what the key is. Our key is to put more focus on being disciplined rather than being motivated. And a really good way to stay disciplined is to find an accountability partner. You can choose a friend, a colleague, a family member, a teacher, or a speaking partner to help keep you accountable. And on the Sunday, at the end of each week, I would call or message my accountability partner. I would ask them how their week was and how they did. And then I would share how I did. And then if my partner didn't do so well, I maybe might ask them why you didn't do so well and what you are going to do specifically to improve the following week. So 
I know this was a slightly long video, but those are my 10 tips on how you can create the perfect study routine and also how you can just be more effective and efficient with your time when learning business English. So if you're looking for more practice speaking and if you're looking to improve your business English skills and if you're looking for all of the things that I've mentioned today, then I would recommend joining the best and the cheapest business English speaking program on the internet. We speak business unlimited. In these lessons, you can come and join other like-minded business professionals and join a global community of business language learners. You can attend live lessons every day led by professional native speaking teachers where you can discuss relevant and interesting business topics. In these lessons, we'll, we will teach you how to increase your business vocabulary so you can express yourself more clearly with your colleagues and clients. And you will get live feedback with corrections from our teachers with new ways to say things. So to sign up and to get more information, you can click the link in the description box or you can go to www.wespeakbusiness.com forward slash WSB. So thank you very much for watching this video and leave a comment below and tell me what you thought and also tell me what other things you really find difficult when it comes to learning English or business English. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.